Hey guys, while we wait on more people to join us, I'm just going to run around a little bit on my enemies, try to get some CLXP. Probably run, do some quests and whatnot. Then I'll get into the grab bag stuff. We'll give it a couple of more minutes, maybe five or so minutes, and uh, then we'll get into it. Okay, go see if I can collect some rubble. It's a little bit chaotic right now in Hibernia, so I might be dying on my poor little animist. Don't mind the dings. It's uh, Beaven, Pimimi, and IRC, so. There's a warrior right there. This is not good. I believe I'm dead. It's a wall. Oh! <laughs> Went back the other way. Well, I figured I'd probably die. A lot of stuff going on in right now. Oh well. Hello. Just going to give it a few more minutes till we get a couple more people in, and then I'll get into the grab bag questions that you guys asked over the last week or so.
It's got about 11 people so far. Wait until probably 7.10, 7.12, my time. So like two, three minutes, two, three, four minutes, something like that. We'll get into it. Hey, Beeb, where, where are the new knights coming? It's taking you guys forever. I'm kidding, you probably got like a billion applications. Couple more minutes, and we'll start the uh, the grab bag questions and really get into the podcast. If anyone in here has any questions for me at the moment, uh, just let me know, and I'll see if I can answer them for you while we're waiting. I guess something nifty if you jump when you're going over this little piece of rubble right here, going into the keeps, so you normally don't get knocked on off a horse. Whereas if you just run through normally, you normally get knocked off like that. Nifty piece of information. Can I make them give us back old keeps? I don't think so. I could, uh. I don't really know if I like old keeps, to be honest. Like, the guards were terrible, they were a big pain. Um. I don't know, I could see like old keeps with guards, like guard changes maybe would be nice. But I'm not a big fan of how it used to be. Like people would camp like in guard range of a Beano, Blood, and Crowl all day, wouldn't come down um, until like you got guard aggro. They'd fly in and try to kill you with like a billion people. My box is stolen by this guy. He's ruthless. Why is the reduced realm point timer so long, even though they are not realistic? You know, I agree with you. Um, something that we brought up a bunch in the past. Um, I think the reduced realm point timer is five minutes as it is, which in the current state of the game is really too long. I mean, the action is so much faster now than it used to be with the uh, you know the ruined keep ports and the Agramon tower ports. Um, faster boating, stuff like that, that the reduced run point timer being five minutes is really just outdated compared to how fast action is now that they've, uh, you know, added new new frontiers, I guess is what they're calling it. But um, yeah, I'd like to see some changes. Maybe like if you're not realm, or realm, uh, sorry, resic, you're real full RPs, or maybe make it a three minute timer, or two and a half minute timer, or something like that. Um, no, the devs aren't joining us this time. You couldn't make it. Um, maybe in the future, though, that'd be nice. I think they're playing on it. So this time it's just me, but I will say that um, they've answered all the questions from the grab bag that they chose. So all the answers for the grab bag questions are from the developers. So, But they're not actually joining us this time. But um, hopefully in the near future, it'll get worked out and they will, uh, John and maybe Talal, hopefully, it'll be fun to have them join us. Yeah, it's tonight questions and answering, but we have grab bag questions and answers that the devs answered, so kind of nice. 
need one more box and I'll go back and then I'll get into the uh, the, pod, you know, the questions, the grab bag questions, since we have about 25 people here now. Okay, let me pull up the question list right here. Yeah, the old grabs, uh, grab bags posted on the Herald. That was fun. Um, I think they did that not too long ago, if I'm not mistaken. They took some uh, questions from post count, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, they did it every once in a while, but they hadn't done that in a while. But, you know, now you have a grab bag via night podcast. So this is essentially, I guess, a new grab bag platform. Hopefully the transcript will be posted somewhere. Maybe on the Herald, the questions and answers. We'll see. I'll have to ask Beeb about that. He's in chat. Maybe she can... Uh, let us know if the questions and answers will be posted on Facebook or the Herald or anything like that. But anyway, I'm going to get into the questions right now. Um, the first question comes from Sleepy S Z Y X <laughs> or S Z X. Sorry, Sleepy. I imagine that Sleepy will. But um, his question is: What are the current plans for the night program with the expansion going on? I know there was talk about expanding it to 20 plus nights, and is it more specific reason for is there a more specific reason for this? Is it possible to associate certain nights with certain classes and aspects of RBR? And the developers answered it with the purpose of the night program expansion and revamp is to move away from the class specific feedback and make the nights more um, community centered. Sorry, make the nights a more community centered program, providing feedback can and will still occur but it is no longer, no, no longer the central purpose of nights. Instead, we're asking them to participate in weekly podcasts, create videos or guides, and host events slash contests, such as the 5v5 tournament we're going to do in the near future, hopefully. The reason for this change is to help drive Dayok community participation to new heights. So yeah, um, in the past, you guys may have known, or you may not have known, um, exactly what the night program did. Um, the night slash team lead program. We basically had knights or team leads at the time for each class and realm, and you know they'd kind of champion that class. And then they kind of broke it up into uh, the night program, where it's everyone was kind of a general knight. Um, they'd represent you know maybe Albion, Hib, or Mid, or the whole game in general, um, providing feedback and whatnot. And now the change is kind of instead of us just being a uh, channel for feedback. It's more of a, we're here to help, um, you know, make the community grow, doing things like this podcast, um, a 5v5 event coming up in the next month or so. And, um, you know, just kind of being there, kind of a, uh, someone for the community to go to, with questions and whatnot, which I think would be, is really nice. I get a lot of PMs here and there um, from people asking questions people that just came back or they uh, maybe want to try a new class, get a lot of random questions and PMs from post count. And uh, so, yeah, so night revamp is happening now and get your applications in for the nights, uh, if you want to be a knight or on the internal forums, even still sifting through all of them. And our next question is from uh, a player named Leatherface. He says he feels with all the realm buffs and potions and champion levels, you're taking away the need for a shaman to be in the group and just putting shamans on the sidelines. Realm buffs make shamans not needed for buffs. Potions make them even worse. If a person dies in RBR and gets res, they just pop a pot and there's no need for a shaman to buff. And now champion levels with disease no longer need for shaman. So are there any, sorry, is there, I guess, I'm sorry, grammar issue here. But are there anything in the works is there anything, sorry, I should probably correct that. Is there anything in the works to make the Shaman uh, Cave do more damage or something to spice them up? Uh, the developer answer is, at the same time, many of these changes have, sorry, I need to see if I can make this text a little bigger. I'm having to like squint my eyes at. Give me one second and I'll repeat that. Okay. Developer answer, at the same time, many of these changes have made the game much more enjoyable for casual players and made it less reliant on others to get some of the basic things done with the game. 
That said, we are actively looking at shamans and several other classes. Sorry, several other classes that recent potion changes have affected similarly to ensure that they still have an active role in RVR. And that's something that I've heard a lot recently. Is kind of are shamans really useful a lot in mid groups anymore? You know, back in the day, obviously, and still nowadays, most people run shamans in their group. But with you know buff charges, supremacy pots, potions, and even champion level buffs, as he mentioned in there. The need for a, a spec buffering group isn't quite, you know, as necessary anymore, anymore in my opinion. And you know, I guess what he's looking at, you know, what else do shamans bring to the group besides buffs and shears? They bring a root and disease and you know, light heals. The heals aren't nearly as high as a pack healer normally, or especially non aug healer. I think most shamans go for maybe the. Uh, I actually I'm not entirely sure about the, what the normal meta is for shaman specs nowadays, but. They're basically, I guess, a backup healer with a root in AoE disease, which, you know, you have all these tank seal diseases nowadays. Um, people aren't really as excited about Shaman anymore as they used to be. It's kind of a, you have to have it for buffs. And now that you can get buffs easier, Shamans aren't a necessity anymore, which I don't think is a terrible thing. Um, I like being able to free up a group spot from something, you know, making less necessary classes. It's like, you know, um, back in the day, it was necessary to have two druids. Now, with the warden greater change, you know, you can have a druid and a warden. You don't have to have two druids. So, I think kind of, you know, makes the game a little more open. If you can run a, you know, a shaman list mid up and do well, that'd be exciting. Um, but as far as making shamans better, I think, you know, they're a little bit... You know, they, like he said, there needs to be something to spice them up. Um, and you know that'd be nice to see what they you know what some ideas would be to make shamans better. If you, any of you guys have any ideas about you know things you can do to shamans to make it more exciting, let me know in the Twitch chat. I'm gonna move on to the next question. This is from Ghost Duty. He's a hip player, and his question is: Is it true that every um, sorry every armor and weapon pieces have different proc rates compared to others? I've heard that some methings and timeless chess pieces have a much higher proc rate than others, or is it just RNG? And what I think he's asking about this question is, um, from what I can, I guess, comprehend, he's asking, are earlier, I guess, timeless indigo male um, chess pieces, do they have a higher proc rate than, you know, later ones? Same with the mythic things. And the developer answer says, this is not true. All versions of a given item have the same proc rate as all other versions of the same item. To use an item you mentioned as an example, all timeless indigo male chess pieces have the same proc rate. So, you know, even if you had a Mephetic Fang, one of the original Mephetic Fangs um, before, you know, the ML10 changes, it has the same exact proc rate as a Mephetic Fang you got yesterday. Same with anything. So, that answers that question. Going to move on to a question from Apollos. He's an Albion player. Will we ever receive more bag, mount, or vault space? <laughs> and there's a uh, there's a knight named Larry, and he is he's always asking and complaining about uh, <laughs> bag space. And you know I agree with him. Um, I'm on a freshly leveled character that I leveled today, so I don't have you know a cluttered vault really. But you know if I look at my bard. You know, I have maybe eight to ten slots available for new things um, after accumulating so many artifacts, epic armor, things like that. Things that you don't really want to, I guess you could put them on a house vault, but I know my paladin has probably about 25 artifacts and they all have to go in the vault. It takes up a ton of space. I'd personally love to see some more bag space, um, you know, for assassins, especially the way they work now. Um, I know all of my assassins have maybe two empty slots for like boat tickets, and the rest are filled with weapons and potions and poisons. And the developer answer to that question about will we receive more bag, mount, and vault space is, we hope to provide this to you eventually, but currently have no time frame to announce this. But never say never. So that's quite exciting that you know that's a possibility in the future, um, something we can maybe look out for. But um, no, no set time for that, so we'll have to keep our fingers crossed. 
And this question, next question, sorry, is from uh, Ain Dum. He's, I believe, in our stream chat. At least he was earlier. He asked, let me find it again. Will the tree, hammer, and cup symbols be put back into the game? Also, could you give any type of time frame? And the developer answer is yes. We hope to add these back soon. So hopefully in the next patch cycle or two, we'll get some trees, hammers, and cups to indicate where action is, which would be nice because um, right now, uh, you know, especially at late US time, the action gets a little bit spread out, especially when you know, it's it's hard to bottleneck people with all these Agramon tower ports. It's so easy to take an Agramon tower and then just, you know, it's hard to find people, I guess. It's hard to predict exactly where people are going to go with so many porting options and whatnot. It's hard to really control where people port like you used to could. And if you took, you know, Bino and Bold, people all, everyone came from Ren at that point. But now with the portal keep in the game, you know, even if you take Bino and Bold, yeah, they'll probably pour out from the portal keep. They may pour out from Ren, or if they get out and sneak, you know, seek an Agramon Tower, they may port from an Agramon Tower. So it's hard to, you know, exactly control action and also know exactly where action is. So I think adding cups, hammers, and uh, trees will be very nice. And also a little bit of uh, nostalgia from back in the day. Be exciting. And moving on to the next question. This question is from Desolation X. What are the plans for new New Frontiers? Keeping it as is or reverting back to NF or something new? And the developer answer is quite happy with RVR as it currently is. And if feedback and player population are in the indication, so are most of you. That said, we do have some exciting plans for new content to add to the Frontiers in the coming months and possibly some tweaks to the Relic system to make it slightly harder to take a Relic than it currently is. Feedback, as always, is welcome. And that's pretty exciting. Um, some Relic changes. You know, I, I'm not one, my play style generally, you know, I'm not really a Relic Raider or anything, so I don't have a ton of experience in taking Relics uh, in their current state. So I can't really comment on that too much, but I do know that relics, you know, get tossed around. I think the relics moved around two, three times today as I was RBRing. I saw, you know, relic has been captured, I think twice, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, I remember back in the day, if you took a relic, it was a serious deal. You know, I'd, we'd have people that, you know, set alarms for 2 a.m. just to get up and try to take a relic when no one was around. Um, and you felt a sense of accomplishment when you took a relic back in the day, like maybe 10 years ago or so. But um, and nowadays, you know, it's a slight easier to just slide in and take a relic, I think. Um, so it's interesting to see exactly how they'll make it more difficult to take relics. Look forward to that. And as I say, New New Frontiers is currently, it's, it's pretty good. Um, personally, I have, um, it's not really an issue. It's just, it gets a little bit stale, always running around, you know, the top part of the map. Fortunately, the last you know little bit, there's been a bit of action, like you see right now. Alps have taken good, and then they've also taken Ben. So, you know, you get some action down there. But I really miss RVRing in like Forest Savage, that zone around Ren. Those were the good times for me. Uh, and a little small man, I miss that. But um, action as it is is pretty solid. Um, Definitely not too bad in my opinion. Uh, I know some people may have, uh, they may not love the Ruin Keeps, but I think the Ruin Keeps are actually pretty cool. I'd much rather see, um, you know, Bino, Blood, and Crowl in a Ruin state than a normal state with the old guards. I think that's a big improvement, having them as a Ruin Keep. And let me read some of the, uh, the Twitch chat real fast. Uh, this is from Hen. He said, Relics are not your playstyle because the RVR system is actually broken. Years ago, even the best teams took part in Relics Wars. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, you know, I, I've honestly, even 10 years ago, well, maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> I've never really been a part of the, you know, the, hey, let's go take some Relics and stuff. I've done a couple of Relic raids way, you know, in the past, but it's just never something I've really been into. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I know back in the day, a lot of the elite groups would, you know, they'd help out um, with the relics. But like I said, it's just never something I've ever been into, even not even in, you know, the past. 
Sides a couple times here and there. And let me find some more questions. Okay, next question is from Maserick. And his question is, Broadsword has been redoing many areas. Can we expect to see some changes in housing, reskinning of housing, more block, sorry, more vault space, elimination of the surcharge per to purchase directly for, sorry, from the marching, mar uh, <laughs> sorry, elimination of the surcharge to purchase directly from the merchant explorer, automatic delisting of merchants holding too much money as an example. Let me, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but, and the answer to that from the developers is housing is certainly an area uh, we're going to be addressing. It's not at the top of our list, but it's close. Once a few uh, other UX, I'm not exactly sure what UX means. UX features are in, oh, okay, never mind. Casual group finder, for an example, and some other uh, changes to quick bar and ability management. We plan on giving housing and specifically in the market explorer a hard look. <clears throat> we are planning on getting the change to, Sorry, planning on getting in the change to D-list merchants with too much money in uh, the 1.119 patch. So, housing is, is a priority. It may not be the top priority, but stick around and you know, there will be changes. I'd like to see some, uh, you know, like for example, um, debuff bonus being able to be searched on a, as like a, a bonus in the item search. Whereas it's not been for quite a while. Um, Cotton asks, what's at the top of their list? I would imagine the top of their list right now is probably the relic changes. Um, maybe changing of the casual group finder. Um, the update of the UI. A couple things are announced in the last uh, newsletter that they said they've been working on. And uh, that does it for all our uh, grab bag questions, but I'd be happy to answer. Oh, user experience, sorry. Carol says in chat, UX equals U experience. So that's exciting. But um, that does it for all our grab bag questions, but I'd be happy to answer anything or discuss anything that you guys have in mind um, in the Twitch chat. And I'll stick around until the discussion and conversation gets a little dull. So if any of you guys have anything you want me to discuss, talk about, anything you want to bring up, any suggestions you all have, uh, just let me hear them in the Twitch chat. I guess uh, Carol says pet pathing um, is a big change for the next patch. Yeah, I know their, uh, the account management center is going to be uh, updated soon. All right, Hend has a question, uh, or a suggestion at least. Don't you think that the new potions and charges for buffs, actually many people can't be sheared, is what he says in parentheses, are a uh, pain for druids and shamans and clerics? I mean, these potions are against uh, the team play, and it reduces the gap between good and bad healers. Um... Well, when you say are they, they're a pain for druid shamans and clerics, is that because they can't shear those buffs from the enemies, or they're not needed to rebuff their team because they're using charges or potions or whatnot? I think um, you know I'm not a massive fan of supremacy pots, but I think the change to make them shearable was good. Um, but the fact that you can just you know repop them every time you get sheared is kind of annoying. I guess they're expensive, so it kind of balances out. Um, I don't mind buff charges from items, um, just because you have to constantly manage them. Um, I think a lot of the you know better players like to do that when they're they're you know serious AVAing or you know RVRing. But, um, When you say it's a pain for good players, do you mean having to constantly like manage their timers, like their buff timers, or just not being able to, you know, use their class to the extent like they're not able to shear? I mean, I, I don't, I don't see a massive issue personally. Um, it's kind of just what I'm used to. Maybe, maybe it doesn't bother me. Um, I think you know, 
you go into a fight knowing you're going to get sheared a lot, you use a charge, and then at that point you're the more prepared player, so you have an advantage. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really mind buff charges not being shootable and things like that. Like I said, I'm not a fan of supremacy pots, just because how easy they are to constantly re you know, reapply, but... Um, it's not a massive deal. Okay, also I have an announcement. Um, once we hit a thousand followers on Twitch, we're going to do a three month time code giveaway. I believe right now we're at 906 if I'm not mistaken. So if you guys can, you know, get to a thousand followers on the, the Twitch channel. I'll have a big giveaway for a three month time card. I have a question from Kiddenwood Mixer. Can we change the towers to two outers and one inner? This would give small teams opportunity to harass Zergs when they dominate an area. Zerg smaller tower defender teams could be jumped by eight mans, adding another dynamic to the battlefield. Well, let's see. Yeah, I guess um, that could be an interesting change. Um, uh, Personally, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of like safe zones like towers where you can just run to a tower and you know port in, be safe essentially until you know someone takes it with guards and whatnot. Um, so I guess a round to keep. I don't know. Um, the way I look at it is I, I roam around, you know, maybe the maze area, um, like on the, on the outside around the maze area. There's no towers there. It's nice. If there's a tower closer to it, like if you had two outer towers and only one inner, there'd be a, probably a tower over there. It would be a, an area for people to run to. I personally wouldn't like it, but you know it could have a good effect on the game. It'd be something to think about. Kenwood. Oh yeah, definitely. Soloing in today, even a high realm rank, it's still tough. I've been soloing on my ranked in Reaver a lot, and it's a very good class. I can, you know, take out a lot of stuff, but you know, I, I fight a lot of stealth zergs. Um, that it's hard to really you know, be able to react to a stealth zerg because you know you, you see a full group coming, a full group of visibles. You can, you know, if everyone having speed six, you can run away or hide somewhere. The stealth zerg, you don't know you're walking into eight people. Um, I'm not saying stealth zerg is the only reason soloing's hard, but um, most of the time you don't really find a lot of one v ones. You almost have to be on a class that has the ability to take out two or three people. Um, but yeah, soloing's definitely tough nowadays. And uh, I think we're going to do a one-month time code giveaway. Um, even if we don't hit 1,000 followers, um, we're just going to do a, a one-month time code giveaway. So I'll probably do that in a couple of minutes. So st stick around for that. And like I said earlier, once we get to 1,000 Twitch followers, um, we'll, we'll give out a three-month time code. It probably won't be tonight. It may be next week. So just come back next week, and we'll see if we got there. Yeah, I like uh, Aliens' idea for a hunter. You get go around 46 bow, 39 spear for the back stun. And you get, I think, the level 30 pet, 32 pet, if I'm not mistaken. Nazo said, any plans to make guilds more attractive? You know, I'm not sure um, if that's in the pipeline yet. Um, I know it's been talked about a little bit, but I don't know where that is on the priority list. Um, if you guys have any suggestions that would make guilds, you know, 
what we could do to make guilds more attractive and maybe alliances, you know, useful again. Be great to hear. If anything needs love, I think mercs need to be up there. Um, yeah, as far as, uh, you know, the light tank game, um, mercs are probably one of the weaker ones. You know, they don't have their spike damage um, special ability like Zerks and BMs do with Vindo and Triple Wield. They get a, uh, a defensive ability, which is, I guess, useful, but at that role, I think most people would prefer something to help their burst damage. Um, yeah, Alien says a uh, DT possibly affecting spells like the old fumble on spells dis or uh, miscast could be interesting. But um, as far as like you know mercs and small mans and whatnot, uh, it's hard for me to comment on that because I hadn't played one or played against a ton recently. But uh, I, I know the way mercs fit into most hybrid alp groups. It's it's hard for that merc spot. Uh, Armsman, you know, then you have your, your Sork and your, your Thurg. And, you know, Light Tanks on mid and hib, they do a lot of interrupting, and then they can also put out a little bit of damage here and there. But um, I, I think their main job normally is to interrupt, whereas on out groups, your interrupts are always usually covered by the Minstrel, the Thurg, you know, the Sork, all the pets, the Sork pet, Cab pet, you know, the offensive cleric, things like that. You have a ton of interrupts, so you almost don't really need the Light Tank Merc up there for the interrupts. I think a lot of people run maybe another armsman or a paladin as a defensive tank, or you, know, you could always run two armsmen. The merc fits into a lot of groups, but it's kind of overkill, um, in my opinion. Yeah, quite. I agree. They're not supposed to be the same as the other realms. Um, that's that's true. You want to keep them as unique as you can, but uh, you also want them to be uh, functional and balanced without you know having mirror realms which is quite boring um, and right now you know like I said you know mercs are the only ones that get the uh, defensive ability but and I'm not sure if you gave mercs even a, uh, a spike damage special ability they'd be that much more attractive in an alb group um, I'm not sure maybe but it's I couldn't say for sure that yeah, if you give Mercs essentially a triple wheel, that they'll be you know in every out group. I don't I don't think that'll be the case anyway. Neza has another question: As someone who doesn't zerg, are there any plans to make uh, zerging mindlessly less attractive? It's incredibly frustrating running into a forty man zerg wandering around from a ruined keep for no reason. I wish there was a more incentive to split up zergs unless it dealt with relics. At which point, bring on the hammers, cups, and trees. Um. Yeah, I mean, I play a lot of uh, Euro time on the weekends in a duo or in trio, and we see the Hororia Zerg. It's a pretty massive Zerg, and they just run around. Um, I don't really know exactly what they do. It seems like they just kind of roam between, you know, for example, Burke and Bino, and then they run down to Maze. I don't know if they do a lot of uh, you know relic takes with their Zerg, but they just kind of run around with the big Zerg. Um, whether that's a bad thing or not, it's, you know, I'm sure that's up for debate, but uh, there's an incentive to kind of break up Zergs. I'm not sure um, what you could do there. I think Zerging is healthy for the game to an extent. Um, you're doing, you know, kind of realm objectives such as relics and things like that. You know, sieging other realms to take keeps and whatnot. As far as um, I'm not a big fan where they just roam around just to roam around. Is that, you know my personal opinion, but. Uh, I don't know what you could do to uh, split them up, or even if you would want to. Yeah, as someone says, zerg them back. Um, but yeah, some players don't like the zerg, you know, game. You just have to avoid them, and it's not too hard to avoid a zerg. Uh, just kind of have to, you know, the part of the game. Just have to play around them. I have a question in IRC from Sleepy Will. He's unable to join the Twitch chat for some reason, but his question is, any talks about um, possible possible PR for bringing back players during the summer months, i.e. events, etc.? Um, you know, I'm not too sure exactly um, 
you know, big marketing and you know, personal relations plans from Broadsword, but uh, I do know about the 5v5 event, and hopefully we'll have some more details about that out soon. Um, that should be coming in the coming months. Uh, big 5v5 free-for-all tournament on Pendragon. So that'd be a cool event, I think, uh, that hopefully will bring back some people. Um, as far as events, I'm sure we'll have some other ones um, sprinkled throughout, like we normally do, like you know the Easter event and things like that, which has already passed. Just the standard events. As far as um, new events, um, we're expanding the night program, and one of the jobs for the nights um, is to kind of host events and create you know community events and things for us to do. So hopefully we'll see more of that when the night program expands. So. There's that. Let me scroll back up through my Twitch chat real fast. Kenwood um, said earlier, how about reducing all CC timers by 20%? And I'm, I'm very strong. My, my opinion about CC is very strong. I really like CC. And I, I really think CC is important to Dayok because it's one of the, the big factors that makes Dayok um, different, I guess, from other MMOs uh, that I've played at least. Um, I have, uh, you know, I guess the, I'm a big fan of having less numbers and taking out more, you know, bigger numbers. And CC is an incredibly important part of, you know, being able to kill higher numbers. And right now, um, as someone just said, CC is already too low. I kind of agree with that. Um, you know, there's so many classes that have debt, so many with stoicism, so many with CC reducing abilities, such as Skull Root Reduction, Bard Mez Reduction, Healer and Sort Mez Reduction. I am a, uh, you know, I'd almost like to see more CC, less CC reduction abilities, in fact. Um, that's my opinion. Um, I'm sure some people have different opinions about that, but I think a lot of people really like CC and Dayok. I mean, it's what makes Dayok different and what makes it, um, I don't know, just what makes it Dayok to me. So I personally wouldn't like to see any changes or any reductions to CC timers. But that's that's coming from a personal opinion. Let me read through the uh, Twitch comments real fast again. Uh, Hen has another um, comment. It's hard to balance a game for solos and groups at the same time. Actual meta is really pro, solo, and camp. Sorry, solo and camp. Fight and ruins, easy port, easy dodge. Uh, what is a broadsword point of view? Do they want to force people to solo and stay in heaps, or do they want, uh, or do they plan some new patch to make group play more attractive? Um, as far as a patch to make group play more attractive, I don't know there. Um, I wouldn't say the game's balanced around solo right now either. Um, as someone that does a lot of soloing, um, it doesn't seem like the game's balanced around solo play. Uh, I think it's probably look it looks more towards maybe small man play. Um, and I, I don't know the fast action, the camping to keep. Um, you see a lot of full groups do that. At least I do. Um, like I'll see uh, like the Alps Macish group. They'll sometimes camp a rune keep for a little while. You know, random mid groups. Uh, I can't remember what they're called, but. Uh, you get a lot of full groups that'll camp the run keeps or even camp around the aggro towers. Um, I think the point of you know, the aggro towers and the rune keep ports was to create um, faster action. Kind of, I think they tried to uh, shrink the map a little bit, shrink the usable map of where people will be to, um, since the population's not what it was 10 years ago, to make it uh, easier to find fights and whatnot. So I'm not sure if they. Uh, I'm not sure if the actual meta right now is very pro solo. It's it's very hard to solo now. I think it's a lot easier to you know five man. Five man's probably uh, I don't know. You, I have the most fun right now when I'm in a five man. I can do the most. I can kill the most groups. Um, so it's hard to find in a full group. Like in, if I'm with an eight man, it's hard to find other eight mans to fight a lot. A lot of times you're around other small mans and whatnot, so it gets a little boring. So I think personally, five man right now is kind of the sweet spot. I'll look through some more uh, Twitch questions. And we have Carol's response to Sleepy's question. She says, this was about the events um, during the summer months. 
Carol says, yes, po possibly we'll do more new events, but not sure on a comeback campaign. So let me look through some more Twitch comments. Any more comments, guys? I'd be happy to answer them. At least talk about them with you guys. Actually, right now, while it's on my mind, let me do a uh, time card giveaway. Let me get this set up real fast. Okay, what I'm gonna do, as I did, as I do most times, I give away time cards. I just have a uh, list randomizer, um, as you can see here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take all of the Twitch users currently in chat, copy paste it into the list randomizer, take out just the headings up here, I'm gonna take Carol and myself out, I'm gonna take the viewers out because viewers is not a person. Okay, and then once I randomize this list, it will, uh, whoever has, whoever's first on the list will get the time card. It's just a one month time card. It's not a three month time card for the uh, 1,000 Twitch followers. So probably check back next week. Hopefully we'll reach that goal. I'm gonna go ahead and randomize this and I'll tell you who wins. Okay, Skyler56 is the, uh, the time card winner. So congratulations, Skyler56. Change my OBS back over. Okay, let me look through some more Twitch comments real fast. Aileen says he'd like Levy to be uh, 150 DD proc again. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure that's a great idea, um, as viewers are pretty much, uh, they're pretty strong solo at the moment, and I'd push them well over the top, I think. Um, where Reavers struggle, I think, in groups is they're prone to CC. Even if you get debt 5, charge 5, sorry, debt 9, charge 5, you, you still eat out. You still eat a really long route and a really long mez. Um, and if you're pulling or pushing, you just get left behind. And that's not great for any sort of interrupting your DPS tank. Whereas Merc and Armsman, you're, you, know, you have debt 9 and stoicism. You get rooted and you're rooted for maybe you know less than 10 seconds. Same with the Mez. And with Minstrels, you have a pet to break your Mez and root. So Reavers really struggle there with CC. Um, they also struggle because in groups, when you're facing groups with red or uh, yellow spirit resist, that levy damage with the, uh, I think it's 125 damage at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, it's really unimpressive. So at that point, in groups only, 150 would be a great... Um, proc damage for the levy in my opinion, but I don't think it would work properly with solo balance and you don't want to just unleash super reavers on people that can, you know, foreshadow everything. So it's, it's a balance, it's a delicate balance between soloing, but, or balancing between solo small man play and group play. <clears throat> what would be interesting is to have maybe some sort of debuff on Leviathan that only affected um, resists from buffs, but I'm not sure how Possible that is to code, but that's just my opinion on that. I have another question. Do you guys already know the blueprints to modernizing this game to this year's MMO, expected plans, etc.? Well, um, I'm not sure of any super long term plans at the moment, but uh, to make it more modern. I know that we're changing the UI coming up soon, and um, we'll have to. See what other modernizing um, ideas they have. But, you know, honestly, I, I, I like kind of the old school, you know, style that Dayak is. I, I played new MMOs briefly here and there, and I've, I've never been excited about them. Never been, you know, never loved them or anything, but you know, Dayak fits for me. And it fits for a lot of people, from what it seems. So, <clears throat> another question. Um, I have a question from Hintz. Many people just LD if not using 7x3 bars. Can we do something for that? 
Um, yeah, uh, that's more of a technical question, I think, for uh, Broadsword. It'd be nice because I, I know a lot of people do have issues with that. Personally, I don't. I've been running, I think, uh, 15 by 5 for quite a while, like ever since pretty much they released the option to do that. And I haven't had any LD problems or anything. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what causes that or um, if a fix is coming or possible for that. But like I said, it's more of a technical question. I have a question. Any reason we couldn't reduce the resurrection illness timer? Um, you know, I, I can't actually remember what the current res sickness timer is. I normally just cure it with my bot, um, so it's usually not a problem at all for me. What I do have an issue with, and I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, is the reduce run points timer. And we've we've discussed this in prior podcasts quite a bit. But, um, it'd be nice to see maybe if you're not res sick, having that reduce run point timer removed or having the timer cut from five minutes to maybe three or two and a half minutes. That's something I'd like to see. Okay, I have an answer um, from Beaven, or from the developer, sorry, and about the seven by three buff crash. It says, uh, this isn't a simple thing of happening for everyone, but it has to do with a uh, has to do with vid setup, drivers, etc. I guess video card setup, I'd imagine is what that means. Drivers, etc. And it's hard to catch. Um, it's ongoing, but they're trying to tie it down, sort it out. So I, I guess it's a, uh, a fix in the process that they are obviously aware about. It's been happening for quite a while, but yeah, I guess that gives you more of an answer on that. Yeah, Kenwood uh, makes a point that last uh, last week's podcast was led by Lovely. Um, they had some good uh, discussion on titles and ways to kind of, uh, I guess, almost incentivize leading, um, which is great. Like, for example, Zerg leaders and stuff, and people that do a lot in the community by giving them you know special titles and stuff. And I think that's interesting. Um, you know, someone like Heroius or you know, Zyraman or you know any of the Alb Zerg leaders. There's a couple of them. Um, Giving them, I guess, kind of a reward for, you know, putting in the time and the effort to lead a massive, you know, Zerg. I don't know how big they get, you know, 100 people maybe. Because that, that can't be an easy job. Um, it's not something I'd like to do personally, but I think, you know, kind of incentivizing that by giving them some sort of title or something would be interesting. And, yeah, I saw Skylar56 say something earlier, even. So, you know, he's here. Never mind. I see you now. Let me read some more comments real fast. <laughs> yeah, Aileen's he's talking about missing out on solo kills for killing people that were worth reduced, and that's really frustrating. I'm kind of trying to go for low enforcer on my reaver, and I kill tons of people that are worth reduced RPs, and a lot of the times it's a it's a normal fight. They're not res sick or anything. They have stuff up. And I have to actually burn stuff, and I get maybe 300 run points and no kill credit. So that's quite annoying. People mentioning old bridges, and yeah, those were those were very fun. Um, I enjoyed those. It'd be interesting to see maybe one or two of them back here and there. But um, I'll have a. Uh, Someone in here trying to I'll fix that, I think. One second. Okay. Hey, bring your debt with again. Anyway, um yeah, I'd love to see maybe an old bridge or two scattered across somewhere in an F. Just for old time's sake. Very fun um architecture there to play with. Uh, Todd Crazy Kiwi, or I don't know how you pronounce his name, something Kiwi. <laughs> he says he runs around off peak and um, it's hard to find things to kill. 
Yet when horror is formed, suddenly it goes from zero herbs to about 60. How do we promote these players weighing on Herorius to RVR outside of his BGs? And actually, I, I was doing today with my, my buddy Zaze, and we were talking about that. Like, what do these people do, the people in the Herorius Zerg? Essentially, it seems like they don't RVR until he logs in, you know. Because I, I don't believe that there's a lot of other leaders who will, you know, run around with a couple groups when they're waiting on Herorius to log in. It'd be, it'd be nice to see them actually play when their Zerg leader is not around. And as far as incentivizing that, I think that kind of goes back to what they talked about with last week's podcast with maybe incentivizing leaders with titles or bonuses or something in some way to sort of create more leaders so they're not so dependent on a guy like Herorius. That if he's not around, essentially Hibernia doesn't have any sort of Zerg force or action really. Okay, Beaven's sending me some more stuff um, about account transfers. Let me see, hold on. Some PMs right now. Apparently, okay, for account transfers, yes, with the new account center, um, but may not be in the first release of the account center, but is something we're aiming for as far as transferring characters from accounts to different accounts. So that's something that's in the works. Um, it may not be in the new account center at first, but something they're wanting to add in the future. As far as a European broadcast, it's something they, uh, they're they wanting to do. So keep an eye out on the Facebook and the Herald for a Euro podcast for all you European players. And uh, Tune Birthdays, it's something that uh, they want to add in at some stage, but no dates will be available on that. That's not even something I've ever thought about, is you know, when my character's birthday is. Um, but that's interesting. be fun, I suppose. Read some more Twitch comments real fast. A lot of comments on reduced realm point timer and stuff. About the issues with that. Skylar says, can we get some tiles for people to run, sorry, running around with only eight? <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. Um, I, I think the issue with um, grouping right now, um, you don't have a lot of people wanting and willing to uh, to form groups. The leadership, you know, I don't know. I, I know forming my own group is a pain in, in the butt. Um, gathering seven other players and, you know, getting them all together on proper classes and then possibly leading the group around can be quite annoying. Incentivizing someone to lead, you know, even an eight-man group would be something I'd like to see, whether it be through some sort of bonus, like RP bonus or something. It'd be nice to see. Um, yeah, that's something that would be, be good for me. But um, let's see. Let me read some more. So let's see, uh, Aliens ask, are we going to see something done about stuff like vamps with 20 siphoning or paladins with 25% heal bonus and buff bonus? Um, you know, I'm not sure about that. Um, it's not anything I've heard about recently, but as far as I know, the paladin 25 buff bonus isn't that big of a deal from what I've tested. I think it gives you like 25 to 30 more AF on your chant. Which is it's a it's a decent amount, but it's nothing that's gonna absolutely break them. I, I guess it gets them up to what twelve hundred, thirteen hundred AF instead of um, eleven fifty or twelve fifty AF. I mean it's 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 not a massive difference above bonus. I mean they're already gonna have super massive AF anyway. Another you know twenty five thirty isn't exactly breaking them. Um, the tw heal bonus is I mean a lot of classes get heal bonus. And their templates for their procs and whatnot, and Paladin's just another one like it, except for they kind of benefit from the heal chant. But 25% on, I think, a, I think the heal chant heals for like 56 base, if I'm not mistaken. It's been years since I played my Paladin, but 25% of 56 isn't really that much. Um, I guess it adds up over a fight, but I don't think it's anything that's breaking the game for Paladins. I think Paladins are strong because 
they swing a, a 6.0 speed weapon at cap speed with a huge amount of AF regardless of buff bonus. I mean, you swap in buff bonus when you throw up yourself AF and then you just run your chet and you still have a ton of AF. And then obviously their rank 5 is really good. Reading some more Twitch comments real fast. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little bit behind on that, so give you one second. Aileen's has a comment, and it, um, his comment is, what if players were allowed to go red? And by red, I think he means being able to kill players of his own realm, but can't go back to being neutral until they have an RBR death. That's sort of like creating a mini Mordred. And, uh, you know, I just don't know how that would work, really. It sounds kind of weird. I mean, I I'd like it, because I just, I mean, it means more action, more people to fight, which would be exciting for me, but... I'm not exactly sure how that would function. Um, and I don't know if a lot of people would like that. A lot of the, you know, for the realm type players and casual players, I'm not sure, but... It's an interesting idea. Smokescreens ask, any chance of being able to purchase RP tokens to transfer to your tunes and make them more competitive? By RP tokens, I'm imagining um, you mean transferring RPs from one character to another, maybe? Um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, as Beeb says, probably not. Someone asked about uh, any idea of realm bonus. I've heard talks of possible bonus to RPs for staying in one realm for an extended period of time. Something that involves uh, realm loyalty, and that's something I'd like to see. Something that rewards players for, um, you know, staying on Hibernia for you know a week at a time gives them a five percent RP bonus, and if they're on there for two weeks at a time, seven and a half percent. And then if you're playing Hibernia for a month at a time, you get a permanent like ten or fifteen percent RP bonus. Would be interesting to see. And you know, people have talked about realm timers and stuff. Um, I'd much rather see uh, see incentives instead of uh, kind of punishments for people, you know, staying on one realm or jumping realms. Yeah, Talad says uh, twenty five percent heal bonus on a paladin's rank five is a lot, and I agree with that. And same with IP. But like I said, a lot of heal like classes run a lot of heal bonus. Like my Reaver, I think it runs twenty percent. And when I IP, I use IP two. It you know adds another twenty five or twenty percent to whatever thirty five percent of my life is. So it's a, it's a good it's a good boost. So yeah, that's not really isolated to paladins. I mean, the rank five obviously is, but as far as the heal bonus on the IP and heal procs and stuff, that's kind of all classes in general. Like I said, I think where Paladins become you know, over the top is swinging at cap speed, two-hander, and having that much AF with the absorb they have from plate armor. Someone says a casual group uh, finder should have a voice chat button or something to you. Like a built-in vent or something would be awesome, I think. Um, I don't know if that's at all feasible, but... I think a lot of people today, you know, have Vent installed on their computer or TeamSpeak, so that's not a big issue, but it just makes it that much easier, you know, being able to join a voice chat with your group just at the click of a button would be great instead of having to, you know, figure out who has a Vent server, um, giving all the info to everyone. That can be a pain, in my opinion. It'd be nice to have that kind of built in. It's a good, uh, it's a good suggestion. Yeah, Gravin says, I think it would be interesting to make a PvP style level 50 BG, where you could group with people from other realms only in that BG. And that's something Saxon has talked about a lot that he'd, he'd love to see as sort of a, uh, on Geharis. I don't know if a lot of you know about that, but it's a, uh, it's a PvE server. Um, yeah, it's a you know, cooperative server, um, so you, know, you can have a group with the Paladin, Spirit Master, and Eld. You know, it's 
sort of like a free for all, but you don't fight each other. You just fight mobs, and it's all about PV. But what Saxona would like is maybe to have bot or battlegrounds and Geharis sort of set up as free for all BGs. I think that would do a lot to promote uh, traffic to that server. It'd be just fun in general for everyone, and give people that you know have done a lot of Geharis. Give them an opportunity to actually use their characters in RVR, in an RVR sense, or PvP sense, I should say, because it wouldn't be realm versus realm at that point. Yeah, you know, a lot of people think PvE is boring, but, you know, a lot of people really like PvE. It's all about, you know, d different people's tastes. I've done a lot of PvE over the last month, just farming for items, mainly Summoner's Hall, and leveling a couple characters, and it's been fun for me. Um, it's not the only thing I'd play the game for, personally. I like RVR too much, but yeah, PvE is nice. It's relaxing, it's fun, it's interesting sometimes. So when asked, will they ever bring back old frontiers? We need it because it takes ages to find fights nowadays since the game is slowly dying. Um, I don't know, I, I think the population has picked up a little bit here in the last uh, year or so, or last couple months at least. Seems like there's a lot more action out. Um, whether we'll see an old frontiers again, I, I would doubt it. Um, it's changed for a reason. Um, I think a lot of people miss old frontiers now because of the nostalgia of it, and there are you know some good points about, it, but there are a lot of bad things about um, old frontiers. And I think at this stage in the game, with a as you say, uh, you know, the population is a lot lower than they used to be ten years ago. I don't know if old frontiers would be viable at all. How you know big it was and how many places you could go. I think what they're trying to do is sort of, in a way, shrink the map to create, uh, you know, to make, let it be easier to find action. Um, uh, I, I don't think we'll see an old frontiers again, personally. Um, I, I don't think that's a bad thing either, to me. Yeah, any more uh, questions or suggestions? Sorry, I got a text message from my sister I'm responding to, so <laughs> kind of got sidetracked. Sorry about that. Um, someone's saying um, for you know late U.S. prime time, you know after U.S. prime time, I should say late at night um, for U.S. players. He's he's wanting to know smoke screens. Any chance of making a BG, for example, Cathal Valley, a level 50 BG, um, and that's an interesting concept because the way it works now is during European time, like around. 2 central to each around 5 for 6 central. It's it's plenty busy in New Frontiers. You know, it's it's there's a lot of action, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but as you say after 11 o'clock central or eastern, you know, after midnight usually for US players, it gets it gets pretty slow, especially the full group type stuff. Soloing's not too bad. It's almost better to solo at that time because there's less people to run you over, more chance of finding small groups. But um that would be an interesting uh, thing to sort of super shrink down the map and have it in the BG. But uh, I don't know if that's feasible, really. Um, at that point, you'd almost have to force everyone at that point to go into the BG, or yet you risk splitting up action. And when the population's, you know, pretty small, late US time, splitting up the action between New Frontiers and the BG would be bad. For, for both parties involved, people that want a BG and people that want to play an NF. Um, so you don't always have to force everyone to go in the BG or to go in an NF to make it you know, effective. But I don't know if there's any, if that's even possible to do or if that's a, that's a good idea. It's an interesting idea, a, a possible solution, but I don't know if it's the best solution.
explain why amnesia knocks me off a of speed or a horse. Well, amnesia essentially, in layman or in the simplest terms, puts you in combat. Um, it instantly knocks you off a horse because you have an offensive spell cast on you, and it'll pretty much knock you out of speed the next time speed ticks. Um, there are ways to get around that. Like when I get amnesia on my bard, um, if I spam my uh, my speed song, normally I don't lose speed. If I do, it's only for a second. But, um, I think Bragian wrote a really in-depth uh, kind of technical analysis of amnesia and why and how it breaks you off of speed. And I'll have to find that because it's, he, he puts it a lot better than I do and explains it a lot better than I could. So it, it's something I'll have to find uh, maybe for next time. It's really in-depth kind of explanation of amnesia, but in, in simplest terms, it puts you in combat. And you say it needs fix. I, I don't think it does need fix, honestly. I think that's a, a good a good function of amnesia. I think it's uh, and, you know it's a spell that is it's a good spell in the game. It's, it does its job. It's a different type of spell. It's I think it's quite useful and quite balanced as it is personally, but uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't like it. And a lot of people, especially that like bards having instant amnesia, knocking everyone off speed, and there's kind of a compromise made um, by Broadsword, and they lowered the range of amnesia from 2300 to 2000 in the last couple of patches, so it's harder for bards to knock you know, people off speed. Smokescreen asks, uh, any chance of more live events that you know give titles? He misses the old demonic fawn titles. Um, we're doing a 5v5 event here in the coming month or so. Um, <clears throat> and I, I'm not sure yet what the rewards will be on it. We're still, uh, still need to discuss that with the developers. But personally, I'd love to see a, a 5v5 event winner turn title of some sort for the winning team of that tournament. And hopefully some of the, the night tournaments in the future could have some title play worked in, some of the events. Um, and I, I can't say for sure, but I wouldn't say it's definitely um, you know, never going to happen having an event title. So it'd be nice to see event titles, but yeah, we'll have, just have to see if it's possible. Aliens ask, are uh, DF weapons such as Basalt, Dagger of Bedlam, etc. getting updated? I'm not sure on that. Um, so, can't really give you a solid answer there. It'd be interesting to see them kind of be a uh, second tier type weapon. Um, you know, some of the Summoner's Hall weapons aren't great, um, but they're you know, semi useful. I almost consider those weapons third tier. It'd be nice to see the DF drops a little bit better than that, but not not great. Nowhere near the uh, CL15 weapons, since they're a lot easier to get. But um, yeah, maybe make them kind of a uh, second tier weapon. It'd be interesting. Thanks for coming, Kenwood. It was nice having you, and good questions and comments, suggestions. Hope to see you next week. And I'll take a couple more questions, but after that, I need to be uh, leaving as well. I need to go get dinner and uh, prepare for work tomorrow. So any, uh, I guess, last questions? Let me see them in the Twitch chat, and I'll answer them and discuss them a little bit before I depart. Next time I'm doing the podcast alone, I will definitely bring a big glass of water because <laughs> my throat is getting quite dry after talking so much. Don't normally talk this much.
No more questions, comments, or anything? <laughs> yeah, I think Carol on Saturdays, she does a uh, developer point of view where she flies around and shows you some uh, cool views of the current RVR action. So watch out for that on Saturday evenings. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you, Cotton. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> they want to, uh, Carol, they want to see you actually play a character instead of just flying around. Oh, thanks, Mofangs. Yeah, I, I vote we uh, see Carol actually play an RVR one day. That's what I want to see. I want to see Carol kill some people. <laughs> I think if I'm not mistaken, I saw Carol do a PB raid, a city raid, maybe a couple months ago on Twitch. I don't know if I'm just remembering it wrong, but I think that happened. Well, anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, head out, maybe get some food, maybe watch Game of Thrones. But, uh,. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I appreciate all the discussion. It was, uh, it was a good time for us, I think. A lot of good discussion. And join us next week. Um, I think one of the developers, John and maybe Talal, from what I understand, I had planned on maybe at some point hopping in the, uh, the podcast. So maybe watch out for that in the coming weeks. We get some developer question and answers instead of just nights. It'd be exciting. Or maybe some knights and developers. We'll see what we can do. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming, guys. You guys have a good night, and tune in next week. Good night.